Oh, wait, I'm cold sweat. Oh, oh. Hello, this is your artistic we've been doing it. Welcome to Cooking a Pain and Say Totally Not Horror Game. Definitely not a horror game. Totally not. We'll get right into it. I'm getting doki doki again. <laughs> Please read this kind of. Yes, I want to continue. That walk was brutal, but this cabin is amazing. Full kitchen, running water, it really has everything. Finally, a place I can reach a good, pretty good book in peace. Can't wait to tut. Ah, I'm sorry, but it must be the dust. Get this out, there's under control, Maria. Don't worry, guys, I'm sure with little elbow grease we can make this cabin shine. So, are you volunteering to clean and gritter? No. I mean, these supplies here, I guess we have to go out to get what we need. There's a fireplace for me. See, so let's go to the firewood, okay? That's a me, little guy. I'm trying to come up heaven. You need to save my rear from dying due to this dust. <laughs> hey! Well, oh, there's nothing to joke about, Karen. She's not dead yet, but sweet, calm down. Thanks, and that. Uh, Natalie? I think I'll go for it. Check outside with over 450 mosses, 900 fungi, and 70 slime molds. There's bound to be treasure up here. We're roughing it up as fun and mad. I know he knows so much about Edward Foods, we're in good hands. You think the slime molds will be the most delicious? Most certainly not. What about the fungi? Do you even know which ones are poisonous, and Natalie? I, um, uh, I gotta figure that out. You can be the canary in the coal mine, Natalie. I'm gonna end up a corpse here. Eat. Eat both eyes open. Little guy, plenty of wolves and brown, bear brown bears are. That won't be a problem. I read up on 10 different techniques to incapacitate them. Number one is an ally. Oh, yeah, sorry, Maria. Get it again. <laughs> I'll have an eye looking for it. Definitely, definitely better at warding off wild animals. If you come up into handy, we can always eat some food we've brought. You mean the emergency rations? Bad idea, Trump. Hey, Natalie and Maria are getting food. Gregory's got a photo that makes you our dead senior chef. Everyone's looking at you expectantly. You're not. Very excited to try your cooking. I don't get to work while there's still sunlight. Later. Margarita. And Natalie. Gregor. The three exit the cabin, leaving you and Karen alone. I think I know we put the spice in the kitchen. Thanks for helping out with the cooking. Just hit the end, right click or hit escape on your keyboard to pull up the menu. Like this. Just like that. This menu will also allow you to adjust the volume levels or exit the title to the title screen, viewing pupils. Please don't forget to make a new single game without saving. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Do you have any experience making meals? Of course. Is that so? Hmm. Looking at you, I think you'd be good at serving up food poisoning, right? Looks like Karen will remember that. Um. Anyways, going to check out the living room. Let's talk later. Karen hates the living room, so it's just a little bit. You decided to look around the kitchen to find good news for the meal tonight. Tutorials, you never know what you'll find around the cabin. Clues and secrets may be revealed by searching an area more than once. I'm gonna go try on that, on that area with the search first. Uh, the cupboards. First few cupboards are empty. And Natalie must have put this place somewhere in her house. The drawers. Drawers on the left. Just some dirty knives. Knives. Find the wood pile. There's nothing but cobwebs back here. Thankfully, no spiders. Where else can I look? Show the cupboards again. Just some mouse and cobwebs. Find the wood pile again. You put the wood pile closer. This is a pile of Norway spruce. The drawers. Check the drawer above the mouse hole. What kind of mold is growing inside this one? Maybe Karen will find it appetizing. Uh, cupboard again. Check the cupboard is in the sink. You found a dead mouse. This would be a great gift to give Karen. Oh, okay. Wood pile. And there are always spruce bomb burners hot, hot as long from an oak tree. These will be useless during a winter snowfall. You check the drawers by the wood pile. Something you think it difficult to open. Build it with all your might. Wee! Cabbage! 
Okay, middle mouse does that. Okay, that's good to know. Hi. You found the trumpets. Trumpets sound off. Never fear your onion is here. Like my cousin Cornbread says, I'll rise to the occasion. Oh, it's Mary Raspberry. Potato. Cabbage stuffed me into this drawer. I'm pretty sure this counts as kidnapping. Oh, the trumpets. Why talk with those boring humans? Oh, I have to give you drama. Come chat with us instead. We'll share valuable recipes you can cook. We'll share with you our secret chompette recipes. Click them all to become a five-star chef. Potato says nothing. You can find unlock recipes in the main menu under extra. Be sure to but be sure to save the game. So, but here's your first recipe card. There's a day with sesame and pomegranate free, meat free. You unlocked your first recipe. If you want to talk, just come to the drawer. Chomp it. Let's move out. Cabbage. Cabbage rudely slams the drawer closed. The wonder if what you saw was real. You're suddenly worried about what this means for your mental state, but only slightly. Hi. Did you find the supplies? You shake your head. And I really lied. He actually put them in the bedroom. Idiot. There you go. You got the emergency supplies. Karen leaves you alone. You start a fire with some wood and get to work on cooking dinner. It's a nice entree vegetable stew. And the lunch sauce with medium heat. You heat some water with potatoes, carrots, and silver in it. Fifteen minutes later, you drain the pan and set the vegetable aside. This is some butter in the saucepan. You melt it over medium heat. Put on some chopped onions and you cook it about ten minutes. The onions are tender and translucent. Perfect. You next mix in some flour, salt, pepper, and heavy cream into the saucepan. And then go vegetables to the mixture. Hours pass. Grab a bag, more firewood than you'll ever need. Run some wild sorrel. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a bigger bounty. And Natalie's bearing the lead we saw right there. Mm -hmm. right. Maria spotted it. Yeah, that's great anyways. Killed. Wait, who? Hold on. I don't know which one to go with. So, damn it. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's great anyway. Killed 70 spiders today while you were out looking at deer. Oh, she just saying that she did. Yeah, oh, that should come as no surprise. There's over 160 species of spiders here. Uh, 160. Don't worry, Marie, I'm sure they were all in the bathroom or something. <laughs> no, almost all of them were near the couch. Yeah, I was going to sleep on the couch. There's where 16 of them were. I'm not sleeping on the couch then. Hmm. And there's only two beds in the bedroom. I said, Mary, I can't sleep anywhere else, so I'll sleep in the rocking chair. I'm going to sleep with one eye open just in case any of them swarm the couch. Thanks, Scragger. Here in the Natalie, you two take the bedroom. Thanks, big guy. Jokes on you, Gregor. I was planning on taking one of the beds. Hey, Natalie, I smell louder than a lumberjack. <laughs> Sweet dream, chump. Turn your back to the bubble. Turn your. You turn back to your bubbling vegetable soup and try a bite. <laughs> This tastes pretty good. You cooked a vegetable stew. You set the table and ask everyone to dig in. Oh wow, this one's delicious, thank you. You must be a world-class chef. Karen takes a bite. It's bland as hell. Karen, tastes like every other vegetable stew I've ever had. So generic. Could you rather use some meat next time? Gross. For a side dish, we could bake some bread and utilize Fregaria Visca, also known as strawberries, for some jam. Over to Karen's Pips Week. Everyone laughs at Karen's polite ribbing. Nothing makes you happy with cooking dirt meal for friends. This could probably be the best day you've ever had. You go to, to, you go to bed stuffed. Day zero goes to day one. Or are you saying that day one is finished? Hey, you up? How'd you sleep? I was so warm last night, I didn't even need a blanket. What time is it? About an hour until, one hour until dawn. Boy, you too private, I'm trying to sleep over here. 
Uh, gotta get the birds outside without making much noise yet. We didn't bring many supplies, remember? Better to get a head start on getting food. I don't know if I can see the trees outside right now. Gregor, did you see any spiders last night? There was a small one in the bathroom. Yeah. Actually, I did see a centipede by the sink. Maria turns a little pale. Karen's messing with you, Maria. Let's find more than wild swirl today. If you're lucky, look like maybe I'll teach you how to catch some wild brown trout. I was with you in meat, big guy. And Natalie's herb herbalism books say that there's many more species of plants to eat out there. Let's leave the fish alone. You know, I'm not uh, into meat. That's a shame. I'd wake up early to go fishing. Cheer up, Karen. We'll get to observe the trout at the very least. Maybe we'll see more red deer today. Sounds like a waste of time, Gregor. <laughs> Maybe we'll find some black phone berries. I love black phone berries. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe if I like, can you watch yourself today? You nod. But thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Don't see anything, okay? You nod. Why would I steal? Maria and Natalie, Gregor, and Karen leave the cabin with a hop into their step. You're home, you're alone, but the fact of a drawer of trumpets to keep you company. You say you'll be asked to explore a different part of the cabin. You only get one choice, then the tail end. Choose wisely. What do you want to check out today? I'll talk with the trumpets. Hello! Hello! You almost cracked yourself. The, ch the other trumpets are somewhere in the basement. So it's just us today. How about some fun cabbage facts? You shake your head. Yeah! Great. Cabbage is fun for cows. 100 grams and is a great source of vitamins K and C. Pearl cabbage has even more vitamin C than green cabbage. Maybe you should ask Natalie why, they're, why that is when he gets back. Globally, Roger eats the most cabbage. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. Should have, should have been a scholar instead of a war class comedian. Since even so I give you the Champette secret recipe for Lebanese style tabbouleh. Let me see. Where is it? Since I can go into the menu to look for them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know all meal, but I think you'll enjoy it. You're not sure. Tutorial to check out the recipe. Go, go to the main menu under gallery. Be sure to save beforehand. Oh, yeah. oh it's in the main menu, not that main. Okay. Well, my work here is done. Chumpets. Most yet. Can you put me in the drawer? I will despise the others later. Make sure you leave the other cab just stop talking. You <laughs> should the drawer on smart request. You can close the slice and start planning your next meal. We're back. <laughs> I got off Maria. It's pretty rare to be scared of one. It, it's not. <laughs> Who knew the big guy was so scared of? So, shut up! You don't understand. I don't think anyone understands, Gregor. It was just a marm, marm, marmo, marmot, marmo, marmot. I'm not a monster. Maria laughs so hard that your ears ring. <laughs> He's rolling down Maria's cheeks. She's laughing so hard that she's about to hyperventilate. Stop Maria from hyperventilating. Absolutely not. One less mouth to feed, right? You don't get it. It's pretty personal. Then please explain, big guy. I, uh... Gregor looks incredibly uncomfortable. Let's leave him alone. We found some raspberries and elderberries near the cabin. Quite the selection of berries. I also found more wild sorrel. This is going to be enough for a good meal. Everyone is looking for an answer. You decide to do an inventory of all available ingredients. It takes a while, but you decide to push on your specialty cabbage rolls. You're putting a large pot of water to a boil. The cabbage leaves boil for two minutes, draining the pot to the sink. In the medium mixing bowl, you combine some cooked rice, onion, and egg, salt, and pepper, along with some tomato sauce. You use your hands to mix thoroughly and decide to wash your hands after, after your roll come off. Providing your wrist, make sure evenly between the cabbage leaves, you roll and roll them up and tie a string around them so they stay in one piece. Place the cabbage rolls in a large skillet over medium heat, pouring the rest of the tomato mixture over the top. 
Okay, we're gonna, you're bringing it to a boil. You reduce the heat to the bottom of the cabbage will simmer for about 40 minutes, making sure to baste it with liquid. Ooh. You cooked cabbage rolls. Or it looks optimistic. Don't I Oh, okay, so the mouse wheel is how I can go back in the things. Karen looks skeptical, and Natalie looks curious. Trevor looks thrilled. You watch until as everyone takes the first bite. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's pretty darn good. Oh, I can eat the whole batch myself. I think the vegetable soup tastes the better by him. Loving how tender the cabbage is. This sauce is pretty red. Did you use fresh tomatoes for it? It really adds to it. Spilling some of the liquid on top of it, you'll thank me later. Incredible. It's definitely growing on me. Thanks again for cooking. This really was something special. Everyone leaves a dish behind for you to do. Of course. Well, they, they couldn't help out with the dishes. Not happening. You settle in and go to bed. Everyone goes to bed full. Tomorrow will be another great day. Too. Good morning, everyone. Ugh. Again, Cracker? Can't you let us sleep in? Not today. Why? Just don't bother to get on that side. We need to find some food before it begins a downpour. Cracker, you're overreacting. We have enough food to last us a while. Enough food? I thought we used most of the spots for last night's dinner. You try it. The meal you made was delicious, but it used a lot of what we had. There's also the correct precipitation is unusually high in this area, with many areas being at high risk for flooding. It'd be foolish not go out and look for food today. You really think it will flood? Thankfully, the cabin is on high ground, but that doesn't mean we're safe from flood waters. So it's a possibility, so it can't hurt to be prepared. You're losing it, Gregor. Karen, there's nothing to worry about. I think Gregor's right, Karen. Huh? Well, on her to prepare for the worst. Hmm. I think she's right, Karen. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And not away. Let's go and prepare for the storm. Watering should be a key priority today. There are plenty of edible foods and it has better odds than trying to hunt. Give me a few minutes, I'll plot our roots on some paper. Let me handle the let me help, little guy. Now we're gonna head to the bedroom to consult the map. Marie and Karen are still hanging around. Tutorial. Unfortunately, in life, you can't make everyone happy. When you give them a try to speak to characters, choose five, so you can only select one of them. Try to match out your bond with certain characters for unique dialogue and scenarios. Which one would you like to talk to? The only try I would rather talk to Maria. I think it would be better to keep Karen calm. Hey, this paper nail to the wall looks pretty ancient. What were the old days like? How much am does it give me plenty? Oh, it gives me a lot to be able to save. Extremely brutal. Oh, really? I'm going to share the details with me later. Okay. Karen might be able to stomach your stories. But you still agree to tell the details later. Definitely remember that. English ship is stronger. You hear a shout from the other room. Gregor and Natalie come back from the meeting. Gregor is pushing slightly. They run into another one of the things. Hey, can you cook something while we're out? You nod. Thank you. All right, everyone, we have our new root, our root now. Let's beat those rain clouds. The group leaves determined as ever. You have the cabin all to yourself. Some noise. Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Radio. What's going on with that radio? I didn't even notice it was on the ground when you walked in. Did somebody be with the radio here? It looks smoother than anything you've seen before. Seems to be broken. Better pull on to this. Yeah. Strange radio. Before, the, <laughs> before you cook dinner, what should you check out? Let's make the kitchen cook. You said about. To, mm, to, go to the basement. Your imagination runs wild, standing at the basement door. You try opening and closing the deadbolt just in case. You only run to handle the other to turn. Alright.
Oh, we just back early today. Hey, the others are still looking for food outside. Undoubtedly found some more berries, but nothing that will feed all of us. Please don't tell the others. But I'm a little worried about our supplies. I crunch and we don't have enough food, even with rationing to last if there's a big storm and we get stuck here. I'm really soon just to the pundit and your inventory management. Can you try cooking a little less this evening? You know it. Thank you. You've done such a great job of meals so far. You're very sweet. Is my blushing a little bit? <laughs> so I got a heart for both of them anyway, regardless of which one I chose. Huh. Maybe you can teach me to cook sometime. You're not. Looking forward to it. Maybe you can hold cooking classes here someday. Rudely interrupting a tender moment, the others burst into the cabin. Don't be so down, everyone. We got tons of good berries. Jim is so bland without any sugar. Do you have any sugar? You shake your head sadly. Yikes. Turn the front and sit down, Karen. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? And that's smiling for you, Gregor. Yeah, uh. I sat the sunset, which really was tremendous on our way back. He was of orange, red, even a little purple poking out. Red sky at night, sailors to the light. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. So. We can expect to see those to light tomorrow? That's awesome. You're such an optimist, big guy. You must have walked a few miles away today. Gorgeous sights, you could even see snow on the tips of the mountain. I think they're hungry. <laughs> the rumble sounded like a dying calf. You used to look from person to person trying to determine who it was. It was definitely Maria. Maria, I'd recognize the sound from anywhere. Get guilty. Maria looks embarrassed, but the group laughs at her, honestly. Except for you. You're searching my first thing to say, but I can think of as an old riddle. <laughs> Those who have it, do not want it. Those who have it, least succeed. Those who have it for too long, perish. When you feed it, it gets smaller. What am I? Hmm. Dust? Try again, big guy. Everyone is pondering the answer. Maria's face lights up. I got it. Is it hunger? <laughs> yeah, I was going to guess that. So, uh, what's on the menu tonight, Chef? Bread and jam. You crush the berries in your small mortar and best ones better get on some crusty bread. You cooked for raspberry jam and bread. The bread's a little tough. Cracker, don't make it with a gift horse in the mouth. This is, but this homemade jam is die for. Sorry. Oh, you're right, Gregor. This bread stinks. Maria. Everybody laughs. They're not sure this could be called a meal. But they got the job done. Everyone laughs. Thanks you for dinner and heads off to sleep. That was a quick day. Go to bed wishing you had more. You have a strange dream. Something is riding on your back. And it's becoming a nuisance. You try to see it in the mirror, but you can't get a good look at it. You try almost everything, but it won't get off. The pain between your shoulder blades is getting worse by the minute. You wander away from the cabin and circling by a river to soak your pain in cold water. You don't want things to come to this, but you're exhausted all over all other options. You swim out to the middle. Rocks on the bottom cut your feet. You slip and fall to your knees. You lean back, trying to submerge the thing underneath the waters, but it won't drown. It won't drown. It won't drown. You splash frantically, plunging your head beneath the water. The current takes you downstream. You try swimming to the shore, but it's no use. Water fills your mouth and nostrils. After a minute, you stop struggling against the current. As you gaze up at the sky, you feel it leaving your back, drifting into the sky as, as you sink to the bottom. As you take your last gasp, you see bubbles on your back staring into your eyes. They don't even have the air in your lungs to scream. You wake up in a cold sweat. Oh. You son of a... Oh. Okay. Wake up. Sorry, you're making some choices in your sleep. What's going on, Gregor? Did the lightning wake you up? It woke me up. I tried to fall back to sleep, but, but it's so loud. Ugh. Let's just get back to sleep and talk about this in the morning. Everyone nods in agreement and gets back to bed.
except for you. You can't fall back asleep. You still have goosebumps from the nightmare. Karen snoring is louder than a sawmill. You find it very loud and very distracting. You don't sleep a wink. Everyone is now up and awake in the cabin. You hear the front door open quickly, slam shut. And Natalie sounds petrified. I looked out the door and we're completely surrounded by floodwaters. Looks like sailors take warning was more appropriate for today. Maybe go to Claire tomorrow. You can't, you can't steal big guy's optimism, Karen. Why the hell not? That's all he has going for him. Ugh. He's also good at chopping wood, though. <laughs> Knock it off, YouTube. Maria, do you know? Do you think it'll clear tomorrow? I'll give it a 27% chance of clearing up tomorrow. Based on what? I was aboard ships. I read a book on local precipitation levels for the last 20 years in the living room. Sounds like you're stealing a Natalie Slender. Natalie, you're a book nerd, right? I didn't even read it. Ugh. Could make it past the cover. Is that right? Yes. That book shows some great books on artists and crafting and natural sciences. I left them sit there gathering dust. I do have a 27% of it clearing up tomorrow. It's easy. Take the time of your multiply by a fracture of where it begins to explain meteorology to you. She isn't dumbing any of this down. It's similar to. Oh, God. What the, I think that's supposed to be mu. I minus mu. Times mu i minus mu. Uh, like I know that symbol is mu, referred to as mu. Where so the first thing you need to understand minutes of explanation would be like hours. And look over at Natalie. He's listening intently to Maria. So intently he hasn't blinked yet. You can see his eye drying up. A tear rolls down one of his cheeks. This is a brutal to watch. Maria finally wraps up her lecture. She ends with a bow. Nobody claps. Tough crowd. <laughs> oh, Maria, that was all inspiring. You lost me a few minutes in, but it's okay. I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> yeah. And Natalie turns to you. Anyway, there's no telling how long this will last. We can't leave the cabin until these floodwaters stop. I know our food situation is a little tight, but I know you'll make the right decision. I believe in you. Me too. Maria, why are you staring at me like that? Looks like we have enough left of our berries from our bread and raspberry jam. I'll pass on the jam. She gave me more crusty bread. Everyone laughs. Except for you. With them sending in the cabin, you need to keep everyone fed and happy. You sneak out of the kitchen while everyone's still talking. Oh, what are you gonna do? Okay, so you're just getting more of the stuff. This is gonna be one of those where I'm gonna be drinking a lot of water. I'm gonna have some crusty bread and get some work and get some more jam. With the kitchen to yourself, we decided to check in on the chumpettes. How are you? How are you guys? I'll still no. happen. Hello. Don't worry, as we do the trumpets, I'll make sure none of the humans know about us. Oh, that big guy would try to eat me like an apple, so definitely don't tell them about us. <laughs> Are you plans going awry? I forgot that you have a lower voice. Got another cornbread classic for you. Did you hear about the bread maker's bakery burning down? No. Her business is not toast. That one's been done to death. Do you know how raspberries and milk were introduced? You tell her no. Raspberry! Raspberry milkshake. Without an audible groan. <laughs> Did Cornbread teach you that one? Nope, wasted an entire day thinking about that horrible pun. <laughs> it was well worth the time and effort, Raspberry. Maybe you'll win the annual Trumpet Comedy Competition this year. Of course, why not? Not while I'm here. I won't choke on stage this year. Isn't that every year, bread? <laughs> You're still talking about that closing line, bread. You're going to do great this year. I don't even think of eating as if you're hungry. Hmm. Chime beds stick together through thick and thin. Rain or shine. Feast and famine. Tater, I swear to God, repeat the line or we're locking you up again. Life or death. That's right. Chompets, move out. <laughs> Chompets, someone manage to close the door on themselves. You bring the crusty bread and into the living room. Karen interrupts as you bring in the food. Took you long enough. 
Karen looks at the two slices of bread left in mason jar in the mason jar of raspberry jam. There's some mold on these last two slices of bread. Oh. Ooh. Karen's right. What the hell is the matter with you? The you grip the knife tightly in your hand. You think there's enough for five of us? Oh wait, we can't throw this bread away. It's all we have left. Gregor's right. And not only will mold spores give us food poisoning, I'm uh, no scientist. Sorry. Hmm. Let's pick off as much mold as we can. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. We can't leave with the flood water, so we'll have to. Ha we will, this will have to last us another day. Everyone grimly nods, ripping apart their piece like a pack of wolves. Ugh. Gregor seems to, seems to unhinge his jaw and eat it in one bite. He looks like a duck eating bread. Thanks again. Bread and jam is much for him, but it's one thing we had when we left you cr Plenty of rain on our side, so at least we won't die of dehydration. But until the storm is over, nobody should leave the cabin. Should clear up if we just give it a chance. And now, where are you getting that information from? One of the books of the bookshelf about the climate here. Hmm, you're illiterate, so that is that definitely is a lie. Eh. I've seen him reading, the little guy's been studying. I'm serious, he pretends to read those books because he wants us to think that he's smart, but I can tell he's just staring at the page freaking it. What do you think? Oh, I haven't had a chance to save. A moment to save like that. I'm a grief, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. You're funny. I, uh, keep pretending with those books, Natalie. Brutal Karen. I found an old picture book in the living room, but Natalie. Let me know if you want a small fry. Karen. Karen smiles at you. I guess let's call it a day. I don't, I, something tells me I shouldn't let Karen be, um, I should be on Karen's good side. <laughs> I don't know why. You sure? Everyone shovels up to their sleeping areas. Six minutes later. I'm glad you called out in Natalie's bluff. You get to need to impress. It's a shame and Natalie's sleeping in the same bedroom. I should have never let him be the one to share with me. I wonder if it was just me and you. I'm sure we could study and squeeze a few novels in before bed. You nod. Well, we'll have to see if we can kick him out at some point, right? Oh, you'll have to tell me about that anatomization book on the bookshelf. Really cool pictures in there. Karen looks like she has a crush on you. Let me know if you're ever free for a lesson. Okay. Hmm. Karen walks away looking very happy. You're definitely sure Karen will remember that. Is it? Yep, the heart's gonna go up. Ship is stronger. You get ready for bed and put the blanket on. You're gonna see very hungry. The next day, you don't dream the entire night, but you sleep through everyone waking up. And that's how fast a deer could run if startled. Wow, incredible, impressive. <sighs> I wish we had a deer here. With the food getting warm, well, let's just skip today's meal. No. It's only for one day. Various cultures and religions have practiced fasting throughout history. That doesn't make us feel any better, Anne Natalie. What options do we have? Our food wasn't rationed properly. Ooh, he's mad at me. Don't know who he is. I'm to himself. So passive aggressive of him. Everyone goes to a separate area. Karen in the bedroom. Gregor in the living room. Marie in the kitchen. Natalie in the bathroom. Who do you want to speak to? Let's keep doing the whole Karen stuff. Hi. She looks like she's just listening away at a block of wood. Hey, can you? Can I let you in on a secret? I've actually enjoyed your cooking so far. Others accept me, expect me to be rude and mean, so I have to keep that reputation up, right? Can't have anyone thinking I'm soft. You're not sure where this is coming from. Perhaps when you give me some cooking lesson soon. Okay. She's not ready yet, but you nod politely. Thank you. You're definitely sure Karen will remember that. Another heart? Yeah, another heart.
You leave Karen by herself. Everyone looks pretty down this evening. With wish the rain would just stop. We're all doing great. We must not. We must be almost at the end of this nightmare. I'm so hungry. Me too. You are too. You wish everyone a good night and get ready for bed. Is that our stomach? You go to bed with a growling stomach. You have a strange dream. Oh god, not again. A boy is yelling at you in the kitchen. You keep telling him to lie down on the trap. But he keeps shaking his head, calling your name, so you do it. You lie down on the tray, you make your body go as flat as a board, you show him how it's done. His anger turns to courage. And he pushes you into the oven. As a sense of burning hair fills your lungs, you see him sneering back at you. You wake in a cold sweat. <laughs> Everyone seems to be sleeping in later than normal. There's something that they kept them awake all night. The rain is still pouring outside. You can barely make out the trees from the windows. You hear stirring up like its arms and legs. Maria looks petrified. I couldn't sleep. Natalie has bags under his eyes. The storm is too loud. Karen looks out of it. The cabin was creaking so much last night. It sounded alive. Rigor looks a little gaunt. I got a good look at the window. And couldn't see anything due to the rain. Good observation, Gregor. I was so hungry last night. I kept pacing around my bed. Karen turns to you. When is this going to end? I checked outside the door again. Floorboards keep rising. Unfortunately, we're going to need to stay put unless one of those ones just ran in rainwater. As soon as the water, weather lets up, we'll be able to scavenge for supplies. I'm close to the nearest town. I don't know. Didn't you have a map on you? I think I dropped it when we were running after Gregor. I'm sure it will show up eventually. <laughs> Maria and I would go wire the sheet. How are we going to find our way back now? Well, have, we'll have to ride out the storm. Maria looks at you. We're down to our last slice of bread. I don't know how much longer we can put off eating. The group stares at you. It will clear up in no time. Maybe you're right. The group looks worried. Yay, I'll gravitate to an area. You can tell Gregor is putting on a fake optimism. Maria's having trouble. Which one do you want to spend today with? The other one I had was Maria, so let's go with Maria. Brr. It's cold as hell over here. This part of Gregor isn't freezing to death at night. How does he do it? You explain to Maria how the size of a person, the bad content difference, how warm they are naturally. Yeah, I wish I was as big as Gregor. But to be honest, I don't need to be that tall to make a difference in the world. Do you know what he really, what he wanted to do for a career? Maria does her best Gregor impression. Spit, split firewood and gaze at stars. How boring is that? Depends on the person, but pretty boring. You're so funny. Thanks for coming in and chatting with me. Maria blushed a little. You make it easier to pass the time. Thank you. You're pretty sure Maria will remember that. Second heart. You thank her and leave the bedroom. You call everyone together. They all look grim. You can count the tension in the room with a knife. Everyone is staring at you. They all, they're expecting that last piece of bread for dinner. You bring it out, everyone cannot take their eyes off of it. You instruct everyone to take a pinch. And slowly, all five of you tear it apart like a wishbone. Everyone studies their piece of bread carefully, wondering how long it will last. Karen is the first to eat hers. She chews each bite with a few hundred tons, a few hundred tons before swallowing. Natalie chews it cautiously, opening his mouth once he finishes each bite. Maria nibbles on it silently, eyes wide, moving from person to person. And Gregor. Gregor just pops in his mouth like a cherry. He's gone in an instant. 
The group thanks you awkwardly. That's not much, but you've run out of options. Make sure everyone good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed starving. Oh god, what's gonna happen? Oh, what's gonna happen? Good morning. Morning. Let me check if the rain has stopped. It's still flooding. I mean, you can still hear it, yes. What are you going to do? You want to live about two to three weeks without food? Water isn't a concern. Rainfall should end in a day or two, right? Actually, precipitation can occur more than 215, day 215 days a year here. But do you really think it will rain that long? And Natalie, it's been days already. What makes you think it will stop soon? Easy relax, everyone. Let's see how long we can write this out. Fingers crossed it's done by tomorrow. Panic is slowly creeping out. Everyone's looking scared. But you need to survive. Oh god, what now? Karen and Gregor begin to discuss next options. Do you want to speak with Maria in the kitchen? Or Natalie in the living room? What is this? this is first? Think about everything you've done wrong and how you did it. Could you have rushed in this place better? You crunched the numbers one more time. You could have reduced the amount of vegetables used in the stew, but it was their first day. You had to impress them. Is there anything you could have done differently? Probably not. Maria, and Natalie, Gregor, Karen. Do you wonder if they're upset with you? Gregor calls the group over for a meeting. I don't think any of us can take this much longer. Gregor's voice starts to crack. I don't want to ask this, but it's time. No one seems to go outside and search for food. Everyone is silent. I'll go. Maria, I used to swim all the time near my house, so I probably had the best chance of swimming through the floodwaters. No, let me go instead. You won't get very far if anything happens to your glasses and Natalie. You're blind as a mole, right? Remember? That's true, but little guy, let me go. Gregor, I sounds good to me. K Karen, his arms are definitely longer, so it'll probably be he probably. The best at climbing out trees out of all of us. Now that will be right, Gregor. Let me go instead. I'll get them none of these options like good ones. That we need to find the food or help. Gregor grabs a branch from the wood pile. Gets into different measurements. Since we can't come to a consensus, let's draw for it. I'll at least pick one from my hand. I'm sure as we'll go outside to search for food. You're not worried about the drawing. You saw Gregor cut the branch lengths, so you can tell which is the biggest one in the bunch. You pick it, and each other is intently. Will it be Gregor? And Natalie? Karen? Will it be... Looks like I got the shortest. Maria. Maria. It's okay. I've watched Natalie forage earlier, so I'll know where to look out for. Just swim until you find higher ground, then scout the area. Maybe you'll find a fish out there. Everyone looks heartbroken. Karen, and Natalie, Gregor, I'll keep us alive. I promise. She promised. Everyone watches Maria leave the cabin. The silence is deafening. G goodbye. The door shuts behind her. You can finally hear her yell about how cold the water is, and then silence. Okay. I'm sure we'll see her again. The rest of the group nods. Everyone stays up waiting and waiting. The sun is completely set. One by one, each person quietly shuffles off to bed. Ready for bed and pass out. Dead to me. What? Why is that the name of the achievement? Did I already read this? You're in bed, you need to pass out. I don't know if I read it or not. You have a strange dream. And two women in front of you could be twins. One of them could you recognize the other as a guest. You ask the guest to sit to, on a shovel. Then you try pushing it into the oven. Uh, her blades are so strong, she can't get, can't get her into the oven. You curse at her repeatedly. Like this, you hiss. You stretch out your legs until your toes are almost sticking to the coals. You feel four hands on your shoulders and both of them push you in. The familiar smell of smoke and burning air causes you to throw up on the embers. 
You can't let it in like this. You rip the metal door off the oven, tearing through the wood logs of the cabin, screaming your cheese at you through the woods. Your burns chill with the wind. The guest looks behind her and her eyes widen when she sees you. She's terrified. Your fury of rich trees out by the roots, soil from the ground and rocks from their pits. You've never been this angry in your entire life. Your stamina, your stamina can't last forever. You're gaining on them. As you trample through a field of wheat, the guest throws a piece of cloth behind her. You catch a glimpse of it in the sun, golden. As if I magic the earth splits in front of you, creating a chasm of fire below. You fall into the pit, screaming as your eyes begin to sizzle from the heat. Hellfire as fills your lungs, and you're, you're unable to scream anymore. You wake in a cold sweat. Ugh. Okay. Good morning. Do you think she made it to higher ground? I believe in Maria. Me too. She'll be fine. Right, little guy? So what do we do now? Just wait? Karen. How long? It's been almost a day since she left. Now and Gregor look nervous. Someone needs to go look for her. We need to wait, Karen. Wait for what? The nearest town is miles and miles away. Waiting is all we can do for now. So it could be days before she gets back? What are you supposed to eat? Mice? I did find that dead mouse. Darren. I'm sure I know we'll agree, but we'll discuss next options when we get to it. Every waking thought is about food now. I should n I never should have eaten that much. I'm I'm Karen Sands are involuntary shaking. Gregor and Natalie just not in agreement. We don't even need her to elaborate. I'm sure Maria will make it back. She promised. Everyone treats to their areas. What do you want to do today? Uh Karen. Keep the Karen train, I got one. Hey, you don't have to lie to me. I know Marie's not coming back. I don't know where she came up with her being the best swimmer. There's the only one that would know that would be that would know would be uh, Natalie. Last summer Natalie would watch her swim from the shore. He could have been a lifeguard, such a good swimmer. She never went under it, but if she did, he would have pulled her out easily. Why would she lie about something like that? Karen seems to even thought. Maybe it's better to leave her alone. You he closed it her softly. Aw, oh, I didn't get any new hearts or anything. Oh man. I can't stop thinking about the vegetable stew. I'd be fine with the bread and jam. I'd be fine with just strawberries. <laughs> Nobody else laughs. I would kill. Person vegetables right about now. You would too. I'm going to try to get some sleep. Good night. Night. You fall asleep quickly, but you only dream about desecrating a corpse. Wake in a cold sweat in a completely different room. What the fuck are these dreams? Good morning. Karen's looking worse. Will you cook for the group today? Oh, well, there's nothing really I can do. I can only do this. Take out a color to meet and we can do... Oh, where did you get that? The cook in the oven. You cook the meat. Where did you get that? You ignore Karen's question. What's that smell? Burger finally gets off the couch. Where did you... The three are looking at you, salivating. You take the charred meat out of the oven, cutting into small cutlets. They may the grabs off, but you ferociously. You take a piece and immediately devour it. Do you have any more of this? You explain how the meat is stored securely hidden so you can ration better this time. I understand. Thank you. Nylid runs to the bathroom, peeking in the toilet. You can hear him sobbing for a few minutes. This taste is... What did you feel? Gregor walks off. Natalie returns, she's looking choked up. I was too weak. Left you some of the meat. Don't fight this, Natalie. Mama. And Natalie took a couple from the plate, turning his back to the grip as he devours it. 
You can hear him crying. Finally, my focus is coming back. I'm going to return those books. Keep them occupied, okay? Karen leaves you with the men. Who do you want to talk to? Uh, let's talk with... Uh, <laughs> uh, Natalie. You knock on the door for her. So, Natalie, you slowly open the door. Thanks for checking in on me. You ask if you still feel sick. Not anymore. I think it was a mental thing. Please don't tell me where the meat came from. The less known, the better. You nod. Thank you. You sure Natalie remember that? Get a heart from a Natalie. Get the first heart. <laughs> you leave for Natalie and go tidy up some parts of the kitchen. Uh, oh, what's that? I s what? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wah, wah, ha, 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 ho. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You, you, you see that? Oh, oh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Hours passed, the meal gave everyone the perseverance to keep going. Eating would just make them hungrier. Oh, I knew there were, I knew that was something. I knew that was something. They're fine now, but soon they'll be begging for more. We've waited long enough. What's for dinner? You calmly explain that you want to rush in the bend of the swim and there will be no dinner. Fine. I understand. I guess I'd rather eat tomorrow than, than more. I'd rather eat tomorrow than more today. No arguments. Perfect. Everyone decides to call it an early night, so you fall asleep instantly tonight. You have a strange dream. You're having a dinner with a blacksmith. But he's not touching his food. The only light in the room comes from the oven. He clears his throat, stroking his beard. I can forge anything, he says. Your eyes have been giving you issues lately, so you reply, Forge me new eyes, then. You laugh. But then the ropes come out. He ties you to a chair with a long rope to prevent you from struggling. You can rip the rope, rope apart without even trying, so the blacksmith uses a thicker rope. No turning back now. It takes a hot poker out of your coals, holding it in front of the face. You can see his beard and eyes watching you. He slowly brings back the poker, aiming carefully for your eyes. The plunge get through your skull with a sickening crunch. The force of the blow throws you backwards a few feet. You're unable to break the ribs. The vomit you vomit all over your chest as the smell of your decimated eye floods your nostrils. The blacksmith stands over you, spitting on your body. You wake in a cold sweat. Hiya. I'm going to end this first part here. It's technically it's one whole video about splitting into two parts. Why? Because I can and I am tired. If you enjoyed this first part, then consider subscribing, liking, checking out other stuff I do, and see you next time. Bye-bye.